It's feedback gaming. Welcome back to my USA mid maxing series where we're about to make up our composition of our navy. So at this point, I realized that we probably would be better off getting away with probably maybe one or two extra carriers because stacking those carriers seems to be the best strategy against Japan. If it does turn out, like say I'm playing a multiplayer right now and I've played up to this exact point and I realize, oh shit, the Japanese player has gone crazy on carriers. They've got like five or six carriers stacked with overstacked car uh, carrier planes on them as well. At this point, I'd be like, okay, in that point, I don't want to engage the carrier fleet of Japan and I want to make doubly sure I've got air superiority over the regions I'm going to be fighting. So in that circumstance, I'd look on here and look at the enemy placement of their ships. Right now, I'm not at war with Japan because they, I think they've not joined the Axis, have they? No, they've not. So when they do, I'll be aware of it and I'll be able to react to it accordingly. Uh, but anyway, um, this is our big, 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 big fleet. Uh, we want to consist of a few carriers. We want our best destroyer battleships. We'll probably get away with about 10 of them because this needs to be our strongest fleet. Uh, light cruisers, all of them. Destroyers, none of them because they're all shit. Uh, that's good for now. Merge those up. This is, this is our main combat battle fleet, remember? This is the guy we want. This guy is going to be based... Well, for the time being, he's just going to be based in the eastern seaboard. And then we here have our best destroyers, which we are going to sign here. Yet again, destroyers are your bread and butter. They are the um, they are the meat on the bones of your carriers. Without destroyers, your carriers are fucking useless. So the best destroyers possible, and we have the best of the best because we are USA. And we've uh, we've got the planes on them as well, which is good. So we are going to base them here in Hawaii. And we are going to need a handful of divisions to take care of this. So we're going to select them now. We're going to probably grab at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And position them here. We'll select a guy who's got good skill. This guy with a gormless look, Mark Clark. I'm going to sign these guys to reserve because these guys are going to play more of a defensive purpose. I could change their template to just a raw infantry, which I probably will do now I think about it. A garrison division would be better. Yeah, that actually is really good now I think about it. If we just do that. Yeah, in fact, we're going to do that actually. Uh, I think we won't convert them all. Maybe we'll leave a few. Yeah, okay. We'll get rid of you guys and then you can move over. One of the crucial points is we need to make sure that we've got a nice air fleet here. Air fleet, is that even a word? Am I making it up now? We need a, a nice amount of air wings because if they, let's just say you're playing as a Jap Japanese player and he's really aggressive and he wants to wipe out the USA first and he doesn't want to go for Malaysia or Australia, which is maybe a mistake, but I don't know, it's up to him. Um, in that circumstance, he might hit Hawaii really early and try and take it. And in that case, you need air superiority to win naval battles there. And in this case, we've got a big airbase, so that is going to be doable. Okay, we are lend leasing quite a lot of gear to the United Kingdom. So in that case, um, do we even need to? No, probably not. So it doesn't matter. It's okay. No, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So when we get this research slot done, we're going to go for war bonds, and we'll be all geared for war. Yep, we're all going to be geared for war. So we have also got, uh, well, I would going to consider this the reserve fleet, which, um, I realize I got a few light cruisers too. These guys should probably be added on to the Hawaii fleet. We'll merge you guys up. So this is going to be a fleet that we're going to use as kind of a shore bombardment fleet, I suppose. Uh, but to top it off as well, we're going to split off a few destroyers to say about 40 of those. Don't need the subs either, they can all be split off. That's good. 
so the destroyers are going to serve the purpose as escorts, basically. They're going to escort other um, convoys. The subs is there to serve the purpose is to hit enemy convoys. There's no one geared. To oh, actually, this guy's pretty good. We'll go for him. And then finally, we've got our last fleet, which is this guy. It's good. So there you go. Everyone's assigned now. So this is the German fleet. The German attack fleet, we'll call it. Um, and then the convoy raiders and the escorts. Yep, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Okay, that's good. Um, and we can always assign them when we need them. Usually the ideal strategy with the, the submarines, I think we'll move these guys to San Diego actually, uh, is to split them up into as many pieces as possible, the subs, and then set them on individual areas to a convoy raid. Uh, and then depending on the success of the convoy raiders, you can add more submarines to those areas. Uh, you have generally an idea, because you can see these lines here, these dotted lines, these are the routes of convoys. So if you can get a bit of an idea that the capital is here, and the biggest naval base is here in Nagasaki. So what you can get an idea is where the convoys are coming from. In most cases, these usually go to the South China Sea, uh, East China Sea. And plus, of course, you're not only hitting convoys with supplies in it, sorry, resources in it, you're also hitting um, convoys with troops in it, which are going to be around here and here and here and whatnot. Uh, we could probably hit some convoys for, for Germany as well, but I'm not overly, I'm not overly okay with that. Anyway, Yugoslavia is being attacked now by the Croatian rebels from Germany. So that seems to be a, a more historical thing that seems to happen now. Are they at war with anyone? Yeah, they are. Of course they are. Against the the might of the Germans. Not going to declare war on Germany yet because there's no point. Because we're not really engaged and we're not fighting anywho. So. Uh, take out, take out. I'm trying to do my best not to produce too many tanks based on... Because we just can't really. Um, another row of guns is definitely required, another row of tanks is definitely required, another row of planes is required, probably in that order, so they'll filter down. We're going to get Sherman soon, actually not soon, I'll take that back. Uh, the destroyer is definitely the next option because we need to get the best Destroyers, Japan's joined the Axis, just need to be aware if they declare war on me, that's all I need to worry about. Uh, wish you war bonds, I said to you that was essential. And there you go, we're all geared for war now, so we are good, 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 good to go. For some reason, the last part of this lend lease is not working, I think we're going to have to cancel it. At this point, yet again, you'd be communicating with a UK player and maybe some of the other Commonwealth countries, and we'll be communicating saying, what do you need? Tell me what you need, I will supply you with what you need. Uh, and obviously I can't send anything to the Soviet Union yet, but we can prepare for the Soviet Union and see what we need to go from there, really. Yet again, it's something you just have to prepare for and be up against. Uh, at this point, uh, you probably want to assign maybe 10, 20, 14 divisions to... This, this is a rare instance, but what you can actually have happen is... Someone landing on you in California, Washington, Oregon, or California. Um, so you need to be aware of that, so it's just something to be aware of. This guy's good, he's old guy, he's got extra entrenchment, which is always going to be good. You want your best divisions on here too, so don't skimp on that, boys. Uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to spread them out a wee bit as well, weren't we? So, in this case... Oh, they're already on the way, they're almost there. Pretty happy with the composition of this fleet. Probably could do with a few more carriers as well. We will probably maybe work on that a little bit later. See if I can get another carrier. Did we say we were going to make a carrier? Yeah, but we never actually made it, did we? No, we didn't. We'll get rid of you. We'll add you on to this fleet, which is the USS Navy Group 1. And in all fairness, do that. There you go. That's perfect. We do need a bit of chromium, which we'll get that from the Soviets, which is our trading buddies. It's good. Awesome. Okay, so there's a few things we need to work on. When war bonds is done, we are relatively geared for war, and we are... Oh, this seems to be over the supply limit here. Okay. So I'm just garrisoning this area now. Um, 
In all fairness, what we could probably do... The naval base is a 10. But this fleet's too big. Hmm. We could probably get rid of a few destroyers. Because what will happen is that some of the destroyers will get damaged. They'll be the first ones to get damaged. So we can always just... If they get damaged enough, we can just destroy them and sink them. Uh, but the penalty is 16%, which we can get away with anyway. Um, okay, so what we'll do is... Assign you here. In all brutal honesty, they're probably going to still going to be able to hold these anyway. But the the truth is, the the diamond of them all is 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 Pearl Harbor. Oh, look at that diamond, Pearl! Did you see what I just did there? Oh, the jokes so strong. Jokes so strong. Also holding on to. Do you know all the islands are worthwhile because you need this island to connect to this island to connect to the airport here. So they're, they're all. In the most part relatively required. It's difficult to tell where they're gonna land to be honest with you. If you see they're gonna land what you can do is in advance you can react to it. That's probably what I am gonna do. Mechanize the fence. We're gonna go for air land battle for the extra 20% air superiority because we are gonna make sure we have got the best fleet in the entire game. No shadow of a doubt. We have got a lot of air experience too, so in this case we can make sure we've got the best engine on that plane. Which gives extra agility, which gives it more overall uh, um, flexibility in the air, put it that way. We can improve the infrastructure there a wee bit maybe. Yeah, sure, why not. There's something in, in advance you might want to know, I suppose. Oh, there's an island here too. You gotta make your way over there. Upgrade the plane. It's good. It doesn't feel like the factories are, are producing as quickly as I seem to remember in my head. I don't know. Maybe I'm playing a wee bit differently than I used to. I don't know. Looking on that supply, what's good? I I, I did say I did make a reserve here, and I um I don't know. I'm reluctant to change it because yet again I'd be reacting to the player here. I'd be looking where is his fleet? What is his composition? Uh, is he making marines? I don't know, I'm just, I'm going to be observing what the player's doing, so therefore I can react to his plans as such. Uh, depending on if China still exists or not, I'll be reactive of that as well. If China's taken, I'll obviously be a bit more, in this case, I'm kind of reacting a little bit more aggressively than I would usually put it that way. Um, Alright, you guys don't need to hold those. You don't need to hold the whole coast either. Guard forts, air bases, and no resistance, that's fine. Some more divisions here, assign them to main. This, this division is probably as good as it's going to get. Are we producing trucks? We're not research trucks, we're still working on it. So it's 180 days for trucks if you've got no bonus. It's kind of weird not to have it researched, but USA is one of those weird ones that don't have a bonus for it. The UK gets it like really early too. It's like there. Extra divisions, assign them there. How are we doing on resources? Just behind on the tank. 61 days, that's fine. Working on the guns, that's fine. Um... I realized too, have I done my marines? No, I've not. Probably want to do that now. So this is the point where we're going to start importing a lot more gear. And this is where you can really give your allies a nice boost. At this point, I'm really going to help Unit UK out. See, so we've got a lot of air experience here. Remember, we've gained this air experience from basically supplying uh, aircraft to UK and China, which has obviously given us air experience because of that. Looks like the China's on its very last legs here. Holding on. Argentina, war has ended. War ones are done. Uh, this one requires me to be at war with the Germans. So I'm going to join the war now. Join war, German-Polish war. Let us go. So, yet again, I, I feel like I'm being a little bit bone idle here, because usually I'd be a lot more proactive than this. But what I'd do at this point is I'd have convoys already set up on routes to actually engage their convoys as such. So, I guess we can do that now, I suppose. Here, 20, we'll go for 10s. 10s, assign a random admiral. And go to East China Sea. 
I don't think we're actually at war with Japan. We're just at war with Germany and the allies around them. Yeah, we are. So, yeah, we'll plan this in advance. I, I, I would hope at this point in the game that the UK player is already taking care of all the convoy routes for Germany. This is usually a really good spot here for convoys. Non-aggression pact for China? Why not? China's still holding ports in the south, so we're still able to lend lease them. But it looks like, ooh, are they going to lose here? Oh, there you go. They've lost Indu China. Uh, France has lost Indu China. There's always a pause in the game when there's like a change of terrain through an event. Ch change of land from events. Again, we're preparing what we're going to do here. There's also a possibility that, for instance, they could land on us from the east as well. I'd always be aware of that as well. It's very, very unlikely. Really adventurous moves. Very, very gambly. But sometimes a gamble can work, so why the hell not? So at this point, I realize that they are, uh, our really good buddy, France, is having a hard time. Probably want to use De Gaulle for this, don't I? De Gaulle? What am I talking about? Pat, uh, Douglas, that's it. Douglas. So we're gonna go down here and help him out. And yet again, we're gonna go down here and help him out. Probably gonna have a little issue with supply, which is kind of inevitable. It's one of the issues with the um, with the USA because you're on the Allies and you don't have full control over what you're doing. You're gonna struggle a little bit with supplies uh, because you're gonna have to communicate that to basically to your Allies, basically here, here, and then here. And your purpose is solely to defend. Yeah, and this is what the escort fleet is about. And there you go. The Germans have declared war on the Soviet Union. Have they? No, they've not. Have I missed something? Oh, it's the it's the Winter War. Okay, the Winter War is kind of late. 1940? No, actually, it's on time, isn't it? It's on time. Okay, that's good. We can go for Office of Strategic Watmacallits, which gives a reduction on encryption and decryption research. In that case, we'll, we'll bulk go for it all in one go. I think sometimes the hardest part of research in this game is to, to know what to focus on to keep yourself alive. And uh, I think there are a few decisions here that are questionable what research I have chosen to go for. Um, but yeah, again, guys, play it to your strength. See what you prefer. What is your preferred flavor? Play it to your flavor. Have you got any suggestions on how I've played? Um, yeah, drop us a comment below, guys. I, uh, I am willing to take on some advice, making that carrier plane a wee bit stronger. Is that the one? No, it's Wildcat. Wildcat A1. There we go. I'll try and play as strong as possible. Play to the strengths of what you can do. Okay, there we go. So now let's me know that our production is uh, maxed out, so we can go for the, what we want to do. Realize this isn't maxed out yet. Have I not done the? Oh, I've not done that. That's why. We will go for that soon, though. Don't worry. That's on our to-do list. Uh, hundred percent, hundred percent. 100%. Yeah, that'll do for now. We will go for the focus eventually, so it will be taken care of. Um, they're going to go here, here, and here. Put them on escort duty. Troops are about to arrive here, so we can push back the Germans. Yet again, these divisions aren't as strong as I would like them to be. Uh, but what we could do now is put them in threat combat width at 22, and also add on some reconnaissance. A little issue with the supply. No, it's still okay. No, it's still okay. We're not going to overreact. And our supply is dead on, dead on accurate. That's why you've got to judge it for yourself. You go like, mm, how much supply do I actually need? This is actually kind of historical, this isn't it? Because I'm landing into Africa to test out my strengths. Apparently, this was a big disaster for for the. Uh, wasn't this like a big disaster for the? Um, for the, the Americans when they landed into North Africa, I think it was, wasn't it? Why is it? What's going on here? Am I losing my mind? You get an idea of where you're already focused here. You can see with the, uh, the green areas. I guess we go for the South China Sea because we've got all these three areas already. Usually what the, the mid-max strategy is to send one fleet of one sub. I know that probably sounds really strange, but that is actually is strangely effective. It might be the way the code in this game is based, but it does really work. 
Alright guys, can we attack? A little bit of supply problem, just a little bit though, just a little bit. Okay, so guns are going to be worthwhile. Uh, construction is always nice, but not required. Encryption decryption is always going to be good. Uh, the planes we're working on. Uh, working on the destroyer. Working on the doctrines. T artillery is worthwhile. Uh, the next Sherman's probably going to be good. And this is also worthwhile too. I think we'll focus on the support too. God, there's so many areas we're going to work on. See, when you focus in primary on making the best possible planes, the best tanks, and keep catching up with everyone else, uh, you find yourself uh, juggling lots of balls. Oh, French versus French versus Americans. Who will win, eh? Who will win at football? Oh well, that's not a contest, is it? <laughs> you know, hitting those German convoys, trading with Japan. Two front war going on, holding on to the south. This is the best bit. If they can grab these southern provinces. Which is usually what Japan usually wants to aim for. They get a lot of factories and they also get a lot of resources and starve out the Chinese. But strangely enough, if they lose their capital, it is pretty much over right now. But they are holding on. They're just holding on. No legal trade path. Okay, there you go. That's the end of my resources to China. Don't know why, though. Is it because supplies are going here, maybe? I'm not sure. All right, we can produce new destroyers now. And usually the best thing to do is to separate the old from the new. Am I going to a new... We'll go Washington. And then... Go for... Usually an engine's a good one, isn't it? Yep. There you go, producing. Hungary joins the Axis. Ooh. Oh, nice. Also, you got to make sure you set this up as well. I forgot to set up my, my air wings. It was 30 and 35, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We said we we're going to produce three of those, didn't we? Need a bit of chromium. So this is the part of the game where you help out your allies massively by trading with them. And again, keep an eye on the Germans again, because remember, you want to know when they're going to go for Barbarossa. A smart German would try and attack as soon as possible. Uh, but yet again, I don't know, there's a lot of preparation required, so I don't know. Depends how you want to play it. Depends how you want to play it. How we're doing in Africa. Straight some Malakak, hitting those German convoys, that's good. Exercise you a wee bit. We are pushing them back, that's right. Did you hear what he said? Pushing them back, sir? Yeah, we are pushing them back. A few German tank divisions here, that's probably a slight issue because we have no air support. We're going to go for that one that gives us a, a quicker marine, which is, I guess, kind of useful, I suppose. Uh, I guess we could add another air wing here. Add another one on. Yet again, you'd have to communicate this with your players. Usually, versus the AI, the AI is really derpy and stupid and ends up overcrowding the air bases they usually do, so you have to be aware of that. Taking the losses at this point is not a big deal because you want combat experience. Yet again, it feels like the way to play Germany, uh, sorry, the way to play um, USA is kind of to grind by fighting just for the purpose of making your troops stronger and stronger. Engineers are uh, usually good, so let's go for that too. Our troops arrived yet? Probably they have. At this point, does it even matter anymore? 60. Going for the ones with the max infrastructure. That way we can get the most bang for our buck. I'll do for now. German declared war on Hungary. Oh, Hungary's declared war on Germany. What's going on? Oh, this is because they've joined the Hungary and they've just, they're have just they attacking. Oh, that's interesting. Romania? It always seems to be now, every single game, it seems like someone takes Yugoslavia other than Germany. Hmm. Germans not very happy. These guys arrived. Oh, it's outside their range. Well, there you go, guys. Those planes are completely useless. It's the outside of range. What do you know? Well, what do you know? Trying to make gains here, but not being very successful. This is our main force. These guys are done exercising, that's good. The spear force. We could add a few tanks here, uh, but it's tricky. The best way to approach Africa, I've found, is to try and have infantry divisions that have a lot of everything. That seems the best thing to do, just a mixture of everything. It seems to be the most efficient way of doing it. All right, guys, we are gonna go for the uh, division that we have talked about. 
the one that's going to make the most of how we are playing the game today. Um, 22 still? Yeah, 22. Artillery, artillery. Okay, that's the, that's the most we can do for now. It's good. And then we go for commando to get the bonus. So we should have really been working on these now, but I guess I got distracted. Uh, so we would go for commando here. That gives extra 10% extra attack, I believe. And that's going to use up a lot more extra equipment because of... Ooh, loads of equipment. So we need new and we do desperately need another row of guns. And we do need the extra steel too. To keep it flowing in too. I feel like I may have slightly miscalculated my balance of weapons on this a little, little bit. But no, I'm kind of happy because we can catch up on those guns pretty quick anyway. Let's have a look. Guns, 14 days. Oh, that's no time. We'll breeze through that. It's nothing. Nothing. Uh, yeah, so the, the a division that does lots of things here would be worthwhile. Probably anti-air on this would be useful to pierce some of the tanks as well. They've got armor here too. Oh, they're going to send us some lend -lease for weapons. Oh, Philippines. Such a nice guy, eh? Such a nice guy. Grab this port to cause a little bit of supply stress. Can't pierce those tanks. They're probably not breaking through there. Nope. Making some slight gains. Managing to hold against the tank even though they're pit and though we're not piercing them. Yet again, using those tanks. Ooh, it's like a tiger that, didn't it? It's disappeared now. Now they're all Panzer threes. Oh, these are our Marines added on to the main army, which is here. And then we've got an extra tank that goes on the tank division. So I guess, yet again, ideally we'd want tanks to be positioned here. But yet again, it, the supply issues are probably making it less likely. I guess what we could do is just send them over. Let's just do that. Yeah, let's send them over. I wouldn't usually risk it, but we have got full escort coverage of all this area. So it's all good. Usually you'd be really wary of German subs. So in that case, we're not worried. We're all good. It's all good. All good. We've lost two of our convoys as well. So that's one of the flaws of trading out with the world and being on free trade. You get all the benefits of free trade, but then you have to deal with all your convoys, escorts, and whatnot, which is sometimes a bit of a pain. As you can probably see, though, we're hitting a lot of Germans. And, oh, it looks like the Chinese are on the final breath. Oh, how are they still hanging on? I guess they've got some war score here in the south of China, and that's probably what's keeping them alive. That's good for now. I guess logistics signal companies would be worthwhile too. I guess maybe logistics. Some people would go logistics. I wouldn't personally go logistics, but that's just my personal preference. We're working for this one to complete. Oh, no, we don't actually. We can straight go for the um, encryption, decryption. What would probably be a good idea right now is when we've done with this one is to go for um, technology sharing, which we will do when this one's finished. Because that way we can take advantage of the encryption decryption benefits of what the allies have already gotten. So we get the best of 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 the best. Only the best. Usually the Japanese player... I mean, let's just say this was a multiplayer game. Because right now the Japanese player would think, Oh, I need to take out China before I take out USA. So in that circumstance, they probably would delay everything they're currently doing right now. And probably wouldn't attack USA. So in this case, you've got more time to focus towards the east. Remember, the, probably the most difficult thing about USA is not only the bad national spirits you get to begin with, but we're also having to deal with two fronts, really. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, it's what causes things to be very tricky. So we're able to attack, so let's make a push. Fighting through those mountains. Japan has finally taken out China. And we have... A huge gorgantuan axis of the east. Now, what would happen historically if this would have actually happened? This would make things a lot different for Barbarossa, wouldn't it? A massive bully to the east of uh, the Soviet Union. If anyone actually knows what this does, we should aim for long-term cooperation. Does this do anything worthwhile? Because to me, it feels like a no-brainer to always go for excellent proposal. If anyone actually knows, let me know. i really like to know that. Honestly, I seriously would. Italy has declared war on Greece. Ooh, the war that kind of pissed Hitler off. The war that was a thorn in the side of Hitler when he wanted to plan to invade the USSR. Ah, here we go. The USSR 
is about to happen. The more wars are opening up. Okay, we need tank divisions here to make gains here. So we are going to do that. Not really that effective with tanks in the mountains, but who cares? We'll test them out, boys. We'll see if our tanks are any good. So, so technology sharing is what we're doing. Uh, we're going to just pull that off for the time being, just see if we do get a bonus. No, we don't. We get a 70% for radar. Oh, that's such a pain in the ass. I guess we go for this one. We'll take advantage of the ones we get the discount for, because we might as well use that technology sharing bonus, right? Oh! Well, who's got this? The membership provides 20% discount. Some stupid, we might as well research that, even though we're never going to use it, but what the hell? What the hell? This is something I never thought think to use, but now think about it, the Allies are a better team to use it, aren't they? Because they've got lots of faction members. Oh my god, one day. Oh my god, guys, I think I've found the meta game. This is the meta. Okay, this is actually a lot more useful than I thought it was going to be. Wow, I guess I got to research like so many things a lot quicker than I usually would. All right, we're going to go, you guys go here, and you guys are going to go here, go here. And you're going to go railroad in. Can't move over because you suck. I prioritize you guys for the best planes. Yep, I'm working on that. Infantry equipment, get some machine guns going on. I didn't realize that the default icons... All our American equipment. I never realized. Doesn't look like a Thompson, in my opinion. Does anyone disagree with me, or am I just being stupid? But this doesn't look like a Thompson machine gun. It looks more like a Sten. Tell me in the comments below. We can launch an attack here. Roosevelt versus Wilkie. So it removes the Great Depression, which we've already re we've already removed the depression anyway. Um, or you can go for Republicans. We want Wilkie, which gives us the Wilkie's New Deal, which gives infrastructure and production, national unity, uh, ideological defense. Apparently the third term for Roosevelt was actually really insanely unpopular. And I remember reading that a long time ago. Um, but anyway, apart from that, we won't go for that. We're going to go for that one. Just keep the same president just for the lols, right? I realize we're not producing motorized as well. <clears throat> At this point, guns are good. Artillery uh, uh, tanks are good. I guess more planes are always going to be worthwhile. Um, Air Cobra, that's good. Two rows of those would be good. Keeping on top of my equipment is going to be worthwhile. So this point in the game is the point where you would start focusing on an excavation can't even break through here. They're yeah, pissing the tanks though. It's just the mountain fighting is just a nightmare. Need a bit, a bit of planning bonus. That's what I need. Just a wee bit of planning bonus. Guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, remember to like and to subscribe. And also drop us a comment. And also click on the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And don't forget, guys, I have a few extra playlists where I do do min-maxing series. So if you guys want to see the most optimal way, or the most optimal way on the previous patches, basically, of how to play the major powers in Hoi 4 multiplayer, have a look at those series. They might be for you. It might be your cup of tea. Hmm. Maybe. Oh, attack. 10%. Of course. Attack is the way forward. Guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.